Now we're going to take a look at a fifth type of oxidation reduction reaction. It's called a miscellaneous reaction, and we call it miscellaneous because it doesn't really fall into any of the other categories that we have. But let's take a look at a few examples and see what we come up with. Here we have cop uh, copper a solid, so not oxidized, and we're mixing them with nitric acid. Now in this case, the nitric acid is what produces the oxidation, is what's, what actually is the oxidation agent. And so it's going to oxidize copper from a zero oxidation state to a plus two oxidation state by removing electrons from copper, which then mix it with, uh, with NO3. And uh, notice then, then from that we also have uh, nitrous oxide gas or nitric oxide gas, which is a plus two oxidation state, and then we produce some water as well. So notice then for nitrogen, we have an oxidation state here of plus five. It stays at plus five here with copper nitrate, and here it goes to an oxidation state of plus two. The copper goes from zero to two. So it's kind of a mixed bag. It's a, there's no, there's no necessarily, it's kind of like a displacement reaction, but yet then also uh, the nitrogen gets oxidized in another way. Actually, in this case, it gets reduced in another way with another compound. So since it's not a clear cut case of a displacement reaction or a double displacement reaction, we just call it simply a miscellaneous reaction. Here we have another example where we're taking zinc sulfide, which is an ore of zinc, and we set it through this process first. We heat it up with a, an excess of oxygen gas, so we pump in a lot of oxygen gas into a, zinc, into a container with zinc sulfide with a lot of heat. And then what we do is we, re, we remove the sulfur that way. We turn it into sulfur dioxide gas, and we end up with zinc oxide. Now notice the oxidation here is plus two, and for zinc, it remains a plus two, but then we replace the sulfur by oxygen. But the sulfur um, goes from a minus two state to a plus four state. So the sulfur is being, the sulfur is being oxidized by the oxygen and in that way removed from the zinc. Then it goes through a second process where we take the zinc oxide and we put, we put it with an excess of carbon, solid carbon. It's kind of like in a, coke in, a, in a coke environment. We heat it up to very, very high temperatures. Then what happens is the carbon will then grab onto the oxygen, form carbon dioxide gas, and then left over with just simply uh, zinc by itself. And uh, then, of course, because the heat, zinc will then be in a liquid state. And then we just have some pipes out and then we just drain it out of the, the coke environment. But here we start with zinc at the plus two oxidation state. It goes, zinc goes to zero oxidation state. Oxygen at minus two will remain at minus two. But then the carbon, which, st which started at zero oxidation state, will now become a plus four oxidation state. So again, it's kind of a, a mixed bag set of reactions in which it's not quite a displacement reaction. It's kind of mixed. And so therefore, we just call it a miscellaneous reaction. But in each case, notice how the elements are being either reduced or oxidized. And so therefore, we can call those also oxidation reduction equations or reactions. So now we have five different types that we can work with. And in the next videos now, we're going to show you how to actually balance equations using the oxidation reduction techniques that we will learn in the next several videos. So if you're interested in how to balance equations using oxidation numbers, then stay tuned.